Hi everyone. In this session, we are going to discuss about the refraction happens through glass slab and prism. Let's start with glass slab. So this is a glass slab. Uh, it is rectangular in shape. See, this much thickness is there. We, uh, we will get a different uh, thickness glass slab in the market. So, uh, all the sides have equal thickness. So, easily we can allow the light to pass through them. Okay. So, here we are going to see that what happens to the path of the light ray when it incident from one side or how it comes out from this uh, glass slab. Let's see that. Just consider this is a glass slab. Okay. I just draw the outline. Okay. Only in this way we can show it in the two dimensional way. Okay. So this is a glass slab. That means this is the top portion and this is a this is a top portion, this is a bottom portion. Okay. So we are going to allow the light to incident from this way. That means from the top. Okay. So this is air, this is glass, again air. Okay. So we studied what is refraction. When light travels from rarer medium, this is a rarer medium to this is denser medium. Again, rarer medium. Okay. So what happens when light travels from uh, rarer medium to denser medium? We have to draw the normal here. It bends towards the normal. Okay. So inside this glass slab, this is the way how the light will travel. It bends towards the normal. So on the first surface, the light travels from rarer medium to denser medium. So it bent towards the normal. Okay, so this is our first medium. Now it became the second medium. Again, as it is a glass, uh, it's a transparent material, the light can travel. Right? No? So now in the second condition, the light is traveling from a denser medium to a rarer medium. Okay, so this is a normal a denser medium to a rarer medium. So, how the path will deviate? When a light travels from a denser medium to a rarer medium, the light tree will bend away from the normal. Okay. So, it bend away from the normal. So, this will be the path of light when it pass to a glass lab. Okay. Now, this is called emergent ray. Emergent ray. This is incident ray. This is inside one is refracted ray. Same way angle of incidence, angle of refraction. Here also angle of incidence. Here instead of angle of refraction, we used to mark it as angle of emergence. Okay. We used to call it as angle of emergence. Now we just see if I continue the initial path. Okay, this is the initial path somewhat okay, no? Okay. If I just start with the initial path, see this initial path and the actual emergent ray, both are in same direction or both are parallel to each other. Okay. So, uh, because of this parallel portion or both the surfaces are parallel to each other or both the boundaries are parallel to each other. That's why the incident ray and the emergent ray will be in the same direction. Okay. So, uh, you will study much more detail in 10th standard. And this difference, this is the incident ray path and this is the emergent ray path. There is a shift. Okay, there is a particular distance between the incident ray and the emergent ray. We used to call this as shift or lateral shift. Okay, this is called lateral shift. Hmm? For this particular glass lab, how the light ray will travel that I am done in the paper. 
this red color marking is uh, meant for incident ray and the emergent ray and the blue color the path of light inside the glass lab let's see what happens or how we travel okay so we know that light ray always travel in uh, straight line right no so actually when we watch the light from one side if the light is entering through this way we know that bending is happens and it comes out right no so when you watch from one side you never feel the bending of light when you are watching from the right position we will feel it like a single line or the light is always traveling as a single line without any bending okay so in last session we studied about that uh, raising of a coin in the water why we felt that shape because the light travel actually bending is there but still we feel it's like a continuous line let's see how we can see it as a single line this is the way how light travels when we allow to pass to a glass lab okay so the red and red both side red colors are incident and the emergent ray and a dotted line is the incident ray direction and inside the glass lab you are able to see the uh, bending as a blue color so here it's clearly visible how the light is bending let's see when we watch from the other side this is the uh, view from above the glass lab now we'll watch from the same surface or the parallel surface okay so now also the bending is visible visible just see the position it's you can easily see it's like a single line okay so the light is actually so when we watch from other side you are going to see it as a single line like this way now let's see what is a prism and how refraction happens in a prism okay so this is a prism have you ever seen this one this is a prism this is also made up of glass okay so this prism has one two three four five faces okay you can see that five faces two parallel uh, triangular faces so parallelly you can see two triangular faces then three rectangular or square faces uh, it's a equilateral prism so you can see a square three faces okay so this is the way how we used to keep the prism while taking the refraction or while conducting the experiments okay so or else we can do like this way huh so we used to consider this straight line or this portion as the base of the prism okay we used to consider this as the base of the prism then uh, this is called the base of the prism so we have to allow the light to travel from this side and it has to emerge from the other end okay now let's see what is the path or how the light travel inside the prism when you draw the figure in a two dimensional way we have to mention the base comes at the down and the other end like a pointed one okay so this is a prism this is a base and this marking a b c okay so here also two different mediums are there this is a rarer medium that is a inside it's a, a denser medium that is glass and again a rarer okay so light has to travel from a rarer medium to denser medium then again denser medium to rarer medium okay so this is our incident ray the light is traveling from a rarer medium to denser medium what happens this for this particular surface for a b we have to draw the perpendicular or normal okay so what happens to the light when the light travels from denser rarer medium to denser medium it bend towards the normal okay so it 
when to use the normal again so after the bending the light ray now incident on the surface bc now it is traveling from rarer denser medium to rarer medium for this bc also we need to draw the normal okay then what happens when the light travel from denser medium to rarer medium it bend away from the normal okay so this will be the direction or this will be the path of light ray when it travel through a prism incident on the surface a b it bend inside the normal then it bend away from the normal okay so we used to call this as base or commonly we can tell that when light ray enter into the prism always just see the inside part it bend towards the base here also it is bending towards the base of the prism okay so after the refraction in both cases inside the prism and the final emergent ray also bending towards the prism okay towards the base of the prism so this is the uh, path of light ray now we just consider like a uh, glass lab we saw that the emergent ray and the incident ray both are parallel to each other okay let's see how the incident direction and uh, final direction will vary so if i extend this line this is the incident direction of the light ray now see this is the final direction so this much variation if i extend this line okay so this much angle variation is there as in the case of prism okay this is the initial direction and finally we are getting the uh, light ray in the other direction so this angle is known as angle of deviation so in the case of a prism there will be an angle change between the incident ray direction and the emergent ray okay as i done for the rectangular block same way for this particular with this particular prism i have marked the path red markings are incident and emergent ray that blue is the bending inside so the same way when you watch from this side we know that the light has to travel like this way right no but we allow the light to travel from here when you watch from the other side of the prism like from this side you are going to see it as a single line let's see that so here we have the prism we kept the prism on the right position that inside blue dotted line is a bending happens inside the prism and red color show the incident ray and the emergent ray okay so through this side this will uh, light will be entering and this side the light will be emerging so we are going to watch from the other side so how can we see the light okay the path of light so you also you are able to see the bending just look into the prism are you able to see it as a single line a single so this is what called refraction actually it has to go through this dotted line this is the incident ray you can see the incident ray right here and it has to go through like this way but instead of that you can see that portion which is inside the prism so we feel like a single line for the rectangular glass lab both these faces or both these surfaces are parallel to each other that's why the emergent ray and the incident ray are in the same direction but as in the case of a prism this is the first surface through which the light enters and this is the other surface through which light emerges so both are uh, like slanted surface that's why it makes an angle of deviation with the incident ray and the emergent ray Thank you.